Welcome to another video for 7th and 8th grade science. We're going to finish our amphibians and reptiles lecture. This is part two of that lecture. All right, let's go ahead and dive in. So we're going to discuss two main ideas in this video. We're going to first describe the major characteristics of reptiles and then the different orders of the reptiles that I want you to know. Okay, so the description of the major um, characteristics one is that they live in dry places. So unlike our amphibians, these are not these guys are not dependent on freshwater, damp, swampy areas. They have adaptations that allow them to live in dry, arid places. Um, for example, their tough, scaly skin. Okay, it works as a as a protective measure, but also it helps for them to maintain the moisture that they have in their body, so it doesn't evaporate out. Unlike the amphibians where they can also respire through their skin. Reptiles are ectoderms. Okay, so they don't do very well in controlling their own body temperature. So uh, this has to do with the fact that they uh, they don't respire. So they, let me back up a little bit, uh, during the heat of the day because they can't maintain or uh, manage their body temperatures, they'll They'll you typically hide out in uh, shady areas, cool areas, and then at night they'll come out and, and hunt and uh, do their activities. Fertilization occurs in the females uh, also. Okay, so those are some of the major characteristics for our reptiles. Now let's discuss some of the uh, orders, the different orders of reptiles. There are three orders, Chylonia, Squamata, and Crocodilia. Okay, so let's go first in the... Colonia is probably one of the most distinct of these uh, reptiles, the, uh, and that's regarding the turtles. I mean, when you see a turtle, you know you're seeing a turtle. There's not a lot of confusion there. Uh, so what you're seeing here is a box turtle, okay, tortoise, snapping turtle, and your sea turtles that live in the water. Okay, so that's your Colonia. Let's move over to your Squamata. Squamata are your chameleons your iguanas, okay, your boa constrictors. So recently they discovered the largest snake on the planet, and here's a video of that. <laughs> oh, just kidding. <laughs> in any case, uh, your squamata, all right, just continuing on with those, you have your Komodo dragons, your Gila monsters, geckos, and then finally your crocodilia. Okay, your crocodilia comprises of your caiman alligators, your crocodiles, and alligators. Okay, the ones that you'll find in uh, your swampy areas like Florida. So again, these are the three orders of reptiles that I want you to know. Chylonia, Squamata, and Crocodilia. So that does it for part two of amphibians and reptiles. Do make sure that you watch the lecture or um, that you read the text for the remainder of uh, the information that I want you to know. But uh, for the most part, um, what you need to know for this section in terms of reptiles has been covered in this video. I'm going to end the video with another video that is showing you an example of um, of a female carrying her eggs. Now this is an example of an amphibian, not a reptile necessarily, but either way I thought it was pretty cool and uh, I'm going to share it with you guys so you can enjoy. You never know what could be lurking under the surface, especially here in the mysterious Amazon River. Murky as the mud and flat as a leaf, this toad called the Pipa Pipa lays perfectly still, hoping to blend in, especially since this one has eggs to protect and predators are everywhere. So it guards them the best way it knows how, keeping them right under its own skin. A spawning Pipa Pipa is a rare find in the wild and even more so in captivity. But our cameras were there to capture the exceptional occasion. Witnessing this unique mating dance was a first for biologist Chris Rossing. 
the pipa pipa do require special uh, time of year to breed, like most frogs. And generally for them, it's the onset of the rainy season in the Amazon. The rise in water level, the influx of animals and nutrients for food, and the change in temperature all stimulate them to breed. Here at the aquarium, we mimic that by giving them a cold rain shower. And just like most frogs, this frisky male must signal his readiness in order to attract a female pipa pipa. If she accepts, he'll clasp around her waist in what's called amplexus. And they spin around, and while they're upside down, the female will drop some eggs, which the male catches with his body. And when they return right side up, he pushes them up her back with his body. During this intricate dance, the male has to be extremely careful not to drop any eggs. But as many as one-fifth of the eggs fail to stick. I had my fingers crossed all morning, and sure enough, the next day when I came in, the female had eggs all over her back. The lucky ones, up to a hundred of them, stay intact. And over the course of the next few days, the skin of the pregnant pipa pipa changes dramatically. It turns into the sort of honeycomb structure. Then, as if something out of an alien movie, the skin just closes over them. Sinking to the bottom once more, the mother toad must stay out of sight and away from predators for the next four months, giving the spawn a chance to grow. Once they're ready for the real world, they'll let her know. And suddenly a bunch of hands rush up bursting to get out. And the frogs will actually reach up through these holes and push themselves out. What's so remarkable about the pipa pipa and its birthing process is that it's not tadpoles, but fully formed toadlets that emerge. Right. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. Good luck in your studying.